All right, here's your complete guide to growing peppers in mylar bags with hydroponics. We're gonna be going over how I put them together, how I maintained them, and pros and cons. And I've got me some notes here so I don't forget anything and I hope I answer all your questions that everybody's been asking. Now let me preface all of this by reminding some people that this channel is all about cheap and easy. It's to help beginners get started to have fun, have success, and continue growing their own food. This is not to give you the most information that I can, which leads to a lot of people getting discouraged and quitting, sometimes not even starting. Now, I encourage you all to help each other. And you can say stuff like, uh, pump or aeration would be helpful, or I painted my buckets and that seemed to help with the algae problem. But what I don't want is have to. See, there's room for improvement as people advance, but have to discourages and confuses people. Now, I have seven years of videos proving that you don't have to do all that stuff. So help each other out, but do it right. We're not trying to prove who's smarter. I'm completely comfortable with being the dumbest gardener in the room or in the world. We're here to help people. So why grow in a Mylar bag? One of my viewers made a suggestion, so I tried it. Mylar bags are food grade, they're easy to work with and they block out light. For those worried about buckets, these are made for food storage. Now I've had several viewers say that they can't use or they don't own power tools or they don't want to buy a heat gun just to make a downspout or, or buy a hole saw that they're probably never going to use again. This makes it easy because all you need is a razor or a pair of scissors. You cut one small H-shaped hole in the bag, cut your pull noodle in a slice, cut a wedge out of it, and make two slices down opposite sides. That's it, you're done. No drilling, no saws, no heat gun, no mess. That's it. Now if you have a stapler, you can staple them to wood, like a handrail, your porch, or even the side of your house. That was the easiest and cheapest way. Now if you have a drill, you can cut a hole in some containers like the ones I found at Target and you can put these in there. So the Target containers were a little thinner just like some buckets are and this almost completely cuts down on the light which eliminates your algae problem. They're made for long term storage and it says airtight, moisture proof and light blocking right there. Alright, let's talk about the buckets. If you don't want to staple them to the porch or build a structure like I did, you you might have seen the kale that I had growing up the wall on the ladder system or the tomatoes that I had growing in the five gallon bags. If you don't want to do that, the next best option is setting it in a bucket. Now I like this because it keeps the bag protected and you can have extra water around the outside which helps keep it cool. On really hot days you can just run some cool water around the outside of it without messing up your nutrients. Or you could just toss some ice cubes in the side and not worry about diluting your nutrient solution. There, there was one drawback to that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, as for the nutrients, I used the Master Blend for 18:38 tomato formula, calcium nitrate, and Epsom salt. After the plants had blossoms and they set the peppers, then I just refilled with just straight rainwater. Now, believe it or not, it was over a month, I'd say closer to like six weeks before I even had to mess around with the nutrients or anything. Peppers don't use as much water as tomatoes do, which I had to check like every day or two while we were growing those. But I think it's also because with the bag being almost completely sealed up, except for the hole where the plant was coming out, it holds in the moisture a lot longer and there's uh, less evaporation. Now, as far as the nutrient level, I try to do like I do with all my other containers is to maintain a level. Now here's one tip, and I don't know if this is what works or whatever, but it's what I do, and, and maybe it helps some of you all out. I never add more than a gallon at a time to the big containers, and not more than maybe one quart or two quarts at a time in the smaller containers. And that's even if I forget and I let the level drop pretty far. What I'll do is I'll add a gallon, or I'm using the almond milk containers, so I think those hold three quarts. I'll add that much and I'll maintain that new level. And I believe that's where a lot of people get into problems is that if they forget it for a few days and, and it drops really far, they'll fill it 
most of the way back up. And even if they leave room for the air roots, I think they're filling it up too high. Another thing is if they change out every week like the Hydro Pros tell them to do, if they're not careful with that, then you're going to end up putting your plant in shock. Now, I had a cherry tomato, one of those that you saw me growing on there, that I let almost completely dry up on purpose. I let it get real low down to about a gallon, and I only filled up three quarts at a time when it needed it for the last couple of weeks. And it lasted another few weeks. It was after it set the fruit, lasted another couple of weeks. The, all the tomatoes got ripe, we harvested them, and I just let it go until it was completely dry and opened it up and, and checked the container. No algae and the plant survived like that and we got tomato harvest. Now, should you do that? No. I'm showing you the limits, the extremes, as affordable as possible with as little work as possible. I want you to be able to look at me and go, if that guy can do it, like that and get those results maybe I can do it at least that good maybe better and get even better results see I want to show you what I can do bare minimum and have you feel confident enough that you can at least do that and maybe more so we grew habanero peppers we grew cayenne peppers we grew poblano peppers all in the mylar bags and we also grew a load of the banana peppers in uh, the buckets without mylar bags both work you have to watch those like I said because they're not in a mylar bag I did fill them up a lot more and You had a little bit of algae inside of those it depend on what color bucket you had But it worked too with the mylar bags. It was a little bit easier All right pros and cons and will I be continuing to grow with the mylar bags? Okay pros first thing easy to use it, no power tools at all for those of you who, who can't use power tools anymore or uh, don't want to go out and, and buy stuff that you're only going to use to make a downspout. This makes it really easy. All you need is just something to cut a little hole in it and to cut a pull noodle. You can just really use a kitchen knife for that. And you're set up. You can use hydroponics. You don't need a special drill or saw or, or heat gun or anything like that. It's food grade for the people that are concerned about that. So if you can't find food grade containers where you live, this is a great option. It blocks out light and cuts down and I will say almost totally eliminates algae. So if you're battling an algae problem in that, you might want to go ahead and experiment with a couple of these bags. Another thing I found was that it keeps the nutrient solution, your water, a little bit cooler longer in the morning. So well, if you're in a place where it gets hot really quick your stuff sits out there you can only have it in the morning sun for so many hours and then it starts to heat up I found that these went past lunchtime and they would sweat like a, if you said a coke out and it has condensation on it these would do the same thing and they, they would stay cooler longer and th that way you can go ahead and allow it to have more light even during the hot part of the summer where you're trying to shade everything and things are growing slower because you're in shade most of the day this you can let it stay out in the morning sun a little bit longer before they would actually heat up another thing is they're durable these are pretty tough they're meant for long-term food storage and they're reusable if you want to clean inside of a bag or if you're like me i just rinse it out and just use them again if you're attaching them with staples you're going to rip them they're, they are durable, but if you get a tear in it and you pull on it, you are going to tear it. So, you know, if you're doing a staple, sometimes I just pull this top lip down and just staple the back lip. And that way you can open and close it up here, and that's where you can add your nutrients. One thing I forgot to add really quick, when you're adding your nutrients so you don't pour it all over your air roots, what I did was stick a funnel down in the corner and had the funnel down here and I would add my nutrients from there and it would add your nutrients from the bottom up here instead of just opening it up and just dumping your nutrients all over your air roots. Glad I remembered that. All right, cons. The shape. It's just flat. Uh, it's kind of tough. It's like, even the five gallon bags, they don't exactly fit into a five gallon container. You can see, you know, the, the tops are kind of wonky. If you're gonna try and seal it up, they only go like one way. So if you're trying to put this into a square container too, what I did was I cut the tops, folded them over. It worked just fine. It's just a little bit more work. All right, they're not as sturdy as a bucket. 
in a bucket they're like really sturdy but on their own they're vulnerable like i said if you're walking by with a, a tool or a hoe or something you could accidentally poke it the level is hard to track inside the bucket on its own like this when it's sitting up you can go over and just squish it a little and you can see where the level you can feel where the level is at so when i have them hanging up where i had all the kale growing you can actually feel where the level was at but when you put them into a bucket it's kind of hard to tell so you could open this up and look into it all the time and, and zip it back up but another thing that would happen is with the water around the outside if it rained it would fill up on the outside right it wouldn't get into your nutrients and so none of your nutrients would be diluted so none are getting in here which is a good thing but the outside would fill up and what would happen is it would squeeze on here like a juice box right so it squeezed on here and all your nutrients would go up so i had a tomato plant i actually did this on purpose and broke my heart because it was like one of my favorite tomato plants but it's all in the name of science and experimenting right I let the, the level get down really low and I filled up the outside so that it, it did that and squished and raised the level all the way back up and it killed the plant. So if you're not careful, if you're not watching, even though you might think there's only two or three gallons down here, it might be enough that it's going to fill up and uh, if it rains and you're not there, it could fill it up and actually drown your plant. So what I would do is open this up and fill up get my nutrient level like I said you're trying to maintain it don't let it go way down just maintain your level and keep that make sure that that's up before you put any water on the outside so that's a, a little more finagling that you have to do so it works that's helpful in that but you just have to keep it on and it's like some of the other stuff that we have even like the the cracky buckets that we have the plant on the top and and if it's out in the rain and the, and the rain gets in there and and dilutes your nutrients or it gets too high and you have to dump some out there's just stuff you have to ma maintain so that's one thing that you have to watch out for now will i be growing with the mylar bags anymore for right now no and it's great for beginners it's great to do experiments if you're just starting out and you want to try it out you don't want to spend a lot of money you don't want to buy a bunch of power tools you can get this and just try it out a uh, couple of mylar bags a couple of pool noodles some nutrients your business now uh, i'm getting into a bunch of experiments with the organic nutrients and when i start doing these different experiments i'm gonna have to streamline everything i've got to have uh, similar containers and similar plants and that so that when when we test something out we won't be able to tell if if something goes right or something goes wrong if it was because of what we're doing or if it was because of the container or the size of the container or the color or, see there's too many variables so we got to kind of streamline things so i'm gonna keep downspouts maybe a couple of buckets everything else i'm gonna put up for right now and one more thing you probably don't have this problem but over here the neighbor's cat is a menace he's a sweetheart but he's still a troublemaker and he has this thing for plastic and pool noodles if I leave one laying around, he's like tearing it up. And uh, even if the Amazon person comes by and throws packages on the porch, if we're not there, he's over there biting it and ripping them. And, and he's in the garden grabbing the Mylar bags and, and chewing on them. So a lot of them on the top, when they're in the buckets, the top has his teeth marks all in it. And he didn't get to the, the big ones, the tomatoes, but you know, it just takes one bite and it, it'll pop it and there goes five gallons of nutrients. Uh, 250 dollar bag and and probably the plan if it's hot so right now when we're going through all these experiments and everything i don't have time to be chasing them around and, and trying to protect my bags from the neighborhood cat so uh, we we'll probably won't be using them for a little while there's a lot of stuff going on in the yard right now i haven't edited any videos but i, I filmed a lot and we want to show you so that's coming we'll talk about that in another video our master plan for all of the the permaculture and and working with the soil and and getting hydroponics and and soil gardening and everything all together and if you guys saw little snippets we're building a rain collection system and and it's turned into a big gnome village we're having fun with that so we're going to show you videos on that keely might put that on our channel how to make it and things um but lots of stuff going on out there even though it's hot i know you guys nobody wants to think about gardening there's still lots of things to do we've got stuff growing out there but i don't want to film it all and show you because i know most of you out there don't want to think about going out in the garden you know there's heat advisories and they're saying don't even go outside you know stay in air conditioning and that so i know that even if i show you you can grow something 
most of you probably don't want to do it and, and you really shouldn't and, and I think you know stay safe that's the the most important thing we got plenty of time to grow we can grow microgreens inside in that and we can get ready I'm doing these experiments uh, there's lots of stuff that we're mixing up and uh, they have to sit ferment stew for a little while lots of stuff going on so uh, I'm gonna be going over that in some of our other videos really excited about it thank you guys for being patient through our little transition in that and we've got lots coming for right now you guys get out there lift inspire keep on growing be the change catch you next time much love